Hey, today I want to do a little review on my uh, Belgian uh, Duble. I brewed this beer a while ago and I wrote in my past uh, newsletter about the beer, how it came out just a little bit too sweet. One of the things I did with the beer was that I ended up adding the uh, candy syrup to the secondary and I wanted to see how much it would ferment. I'm kind of treating it like priming sugar. And one of the things that I found out is that the sugar is not very fermentable. So when I actually went to uh, try the beer for the very first time, the uh, beer was a little too sweet. Um, not just in like mouthfeel wise, but it was actually like flavor sweet, like it was just cloying. So it was really hard to drink. You couldn't really drink the beer. Um, very, very, very undrinkable to you know say the least. So I ended up fixing the beer and here it is. And I can tell you it tastes much, much, much better than what it did before. So here's what I ended up doing with the beer. Since the beer practically was under attenuated because I ended up adding the candy, uh, candy syrup after the fact that the beer had fermented, I had to go in and repitch more yeast. Now, the way that I went about it was that I went out and I got a highly attenuated yeast and I ended up using a lager yeast. So hopefully with this, I'm gonna actually be able to show how you can mix different yeast strains to get certain characteristics on your beer. The nice thing about yeast strains and once you understand how yeast work, how they go through fermentation, what they do throughout fermentation, you can become a little bit more, uh, I don't know, you, you're a little bit more free to use different yeast strains for different purposes. So for this style specifically, even though I use lager yeast to attenuate, it still has the Belgian characteristics. So all the uh, spicy phenolic and fruity characteristics of the Belgian yeast strain that I used when I first fermented the beer are still there. The only thing that happened by adding a lager yeast strain after was that the attenuation went lower. So it dried up the beer, it got rid of all the sweet flavor that the beer had because of the candy syrup. And now I have the color of the candy syrup without the sweetness of the candy syrup and it has the actual flavor that I was looking for in the beer. So this beer is now drinkable and it's actually a pretty good beer. I'm happy with the uh, results. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do a little bit more tweaking though, and I'm kinda, I'm gonna kinda take this opportunity to announce that I'm gonna be undertaking um, all these different little projects with different recipes where I'm gonna be tweaking recipes until I find, you know, what are some, um, well, I'm gonna focus on some beer styles, and I'm gonna start looking for what is what I think um, a, a good recipe for that. I wouldn't call that the best recipe because I honestly think that calling something the best beer or the best something is just, it's nonsense. Um, I, I'll think, I think there's a lot of like IPAs is a good example. I think there's a lot of really good IPAs. I don't think there's specifically like a better one, a best one out of them all. I think everyone has its own little characteristics and I like different things about different ones. So, um, so with the projects that I'm gonna have is I'm going to actually try to create a recipe that I think I'm really happy with and hopefully start going into competitions later down the road. Um, with that being said, um, let's see what else I wanted to share. Oh yeah, so for those of you who want to know how I actually went about adding the uh, um, lager yeast strain, it's very simple. Um, I had this beer on a keg. I would have never tried what I tried if I was gonna be bottling the beer. I only tried it because I was kegging the beer and I can fix things a lot easier that way. So what I ended up doing was, once I figured that the beer wasn't the way that I wanted it to be, what I ended up doing is I um, degassed the, uh, the uh, keg and I opened it up. I made a yeast starter the day before and then I just pitched the yeast starter onto the keg. And after that, I waited about three days. I let the beer sit at room temperature. Again, I wasn't really fermenting the beer. I was attenuating the beer. So I wasn't really concerned about having the fermenter, or I should say the keg, at 45 to 55 degrees like I would through a normal fermentation cycle. I was worried about attenuation. So I ended up just leaving the beer at room temperature. It was about 76. 
74, 76 degrees, I want to say, um, for about three days, and that that was enough to uh, dry up the beer. After that, I put the keg back in the keg rater, hooked it up, and carbonated, and now I'm drinking the beer, and it's good. So there's the update for the uh, Belgian Dubel, and a good tip on how to fix a uh, high finishing gravity or another tip on how to mix yeast strains if you ever decide to do that. So cheers.